Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we try to give you, the YouTube audience, the education and training that you need to tackle projects like this on your own. Today's project is going to be paver, uh, it's pretty much paver stone installation, uh, but I'm using uh, brick. It's an existing uh, walkway. Let me show you the job right now. Okay, so this walkway or this this sidewalk area here, as you can tell, half cement and this half brick walk, uh, brick over here. And here's just a side profile of what's going on. I messed around with this in, in a few years ago, and when I did so, I did not put this product on. This is going to be the magic that we you absolutely need to put on when you do these projects. Permasand polymer jointing sand. You need to have this product in between the joints here so that uh, it solidifies and holds everything in place, prevents weed growth from growing in. So when I did this job a few years ago, years ago I did not do that. Now I want you to see if the camera will pick this up. You'll notice how there's a lot of unevenness going on here. It, it, I'm not sure if the camera is totally picking it up, but it's it's definitely not perfect. Uh, so what I'm doing, so what I'm doing is I started over here, and I took all the brick out and I put it up here on the sidewalk, just like this here. Then I went through and I leveled out the section underneath, and I've got some tools over here, and uh, I got a. The wood is used as a screeding board. I've got a five-in-one tool. That's that tool right there. That's just a, um, a, a basic a square trowel, mason hammer, and a pry bar to help pull up the, uh, the brick. And then what I do is I basically screed this out, level this all out, and then put the bricks back in. Then um, once I do this whole run, then we can go ahead and put the uh, the perma sand on last. Now, um, I'll show you this process when I get into it, so you can see kind of like the my procedure, the way that I'm doing it. One other thing that I should mention th that really upsets me is that these particular brick I did not purchase these brick. These brick were here when I purchased the house. They're they're not. I believe the correct term is modular and what that means is is that when you take two brick and put it this way and you take two and put it this way the staggered pattern that I'm doing the the dimensions would line up exact instead they don't line up exact you can see uh, clearly how there there's not the same dimension when it's when it's done this way so the walkway is never is not going to be perfect utilizing this brick but like I said the brick was already here when I purchased the house I, at least I can save myself some material cost um, and just utilize this existing brick so what I'm going to do is just live with it not being perfect but I want it to at least be flat I've already flattened out this area here and I hope the camera picks this up that is really nice and flat Oh, and I also, one other tool I forgot to show you, let me show you right now. Alright, so as I get everything leveled and screeded, here's my hand tamper. So I use that hand tamp tamper to make sure that everything is compressed and settled before putting the bricks back in. Uh, there's a better picture of that 5-in-1 uh, scraper that I used just to scrape off the sand that's on the existing brick. And we've got some all-purpose sand. This is a 50-pound bag of all-purpose sand that we're using under underneath the brick in order to give us the best uh, leveling platform. So basically those are the tools. It's just a labor-intensive job. I've already, like I said, started here and gone to here. And I'm going to work my way down here and then show you kind of like the, the procedure that I'm doing with this um, project. Okay, let's get into it. We're just going to start here and build up some uh, some space so we have some room to work. So I'll use the crowbar just to start in there, lift up a brick. Once you basically got one started, the rest are easy to come out. Then what I'm doing 
is I'm taking the um, the uh, the uh, the brick, just cleaning off the sand, putting it here back into the job, and then and using the same format, putting it over here so I keep the same orientation. So I put so I'm going to put them back basically the same way that I'm taking them out. This is some sealant that I had on there earlier. I'm just going to try to take that off because I'm not going to use sealant now. It's just going to be the perma sand. Okay, you also want to tamp it down. I forgot to do that on the last, the last section over there, but once you get it straightened out, you want to go through and tamp out. Make sure everything's good and solid on the bottom. This particular dirt isn't really disturbed too much, so it shouldn't, should not be terrible, but it's not it's good insurance and especially if it, you got disturbed soil you should be doing this okay here we come to a section where they put in a, um, a cement mortar in between so there's going to be a transition from here to the other section so I'm going to consider this all one section I'm not going to disturb this one row when I was doing the demo with the uh, with the standard bricks I came across two bricks here that were just half bricks I guess <laughs> you know uh, I didn't know that until I just took it apart at least I, I you know I don't remember touching that from last time so we're just going to deal with that and just leave it. So uh, basically, and what we'll do, why don't we go ahead and just keep coming this way. And this is the perfect time to flip the brick around if you don't like the appearance on one side. If the other side looks good, you can use the other side. This side actually does look good, so I will use it. These are recessed down a little bit, but uh, I might live with that. Yeah, it probably will, because that matches up nicely here. Okay, I have completed from this all the way up to there. I'll do this in one section and then I'll do this other section as a separate section off video. You'll get, you understand exactly what I'm doing here. Now, um, so pretty much I've, I've uh, completely leveled out and put the, uh, just put the, uh, the, uh, the brick in. And you see by not having the exact size uh, of brick when you turn it to the side, things like this happen where it's an oddity um, and this section over here is going to be the worst section I think I might put some concrete in there just to fill that in better but in the meantime before I even get to that step what I'd like to do because I have such a large uh, opening uh, between the brick and this um, stucco wall I think what I'll do is just make up mix up a small batch of uh, spec uh, mix mortar and just fill in that crack plus that one crack right there before I go and put the sand in and everything because I also wanted to acid etch this entire job but before I do all that in case I spill some over I'll do this um, uh, mix up some uh, mason uh, some some mortar right now and fill in that joint so right here is my spec mix mortar pre-blended dry mortar type s I'm just gonna mix up some of that right there and just uh, put it in the bucket and uh, fill in that big crack. 
Okay, we've mixed, mixed up a small batch here of mortar. Let's just put it in there and see if we can't fill in this crack. Okay, that's good enough for tonight. I'm just going to let that cement set up overnight. And then tomorrow, what I can do is I'm just going to give myself just a little bit of an acid etch just to clean everything down, let that dry out. Then put the polymeric sand on here as the, as the final finish. So, no, no action now. We have to let this set, uh, set up overnight. Okay, I was not going to give you some footage on this particular portion of the project over here, but I'm, I might as well show it to you. So you can see I've already taken out all the bricks and I just put them uh, over here just kind of stacked up uh, relatively how they're going to go back in and then I just um, started uh, stacking them in. Now one thing that I am not doing is I'm not putting down the aggregate underneath this section here. I'm just taking the existing dirt, I'm going to smooth it out, tamp it down and then put the brick back in here. Now one thing that I did do is I did uh, have to take up all the right to the wall, take and remove all the brick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the field uh, uh, bricks first without any cuts. Then I'll start laying in my cut section one uh, and because that's going to take uh, time because I'm going to probably it's not going to go back exactly the way it came out. Uh, I've already been test fitting it. I'm going to have to do some cuts here. So I just wanted to show you the project where I'm at now. But you can see how I started the pattern here. And I'm just basically going to take that and just continue that pattern and do that same process all the way up uh, for the whole thing. So I just wanted to show you where I was at. Okay, here's what the entire walkway looks like after I've gotten done taking every single brick out and then re-leveling it. I think that you'll notice that it's uh, dramatically much nicer than what we saw before. <laughs> it's just it's just a lot more um, everything's flat, you know, and it's there's not there's some lippage, but the amount of lippage is very manageable and it this is not a pristine walkway. This is just a side walkway on the side of the house. So I've got every single brick in place. They're all where I want them to be with the height that I'm reasonably looking for. And the next step is for me to acid wash the, uh, the walkway. Before I started getting into the acid etch, I saw that some of the, the holes or the, uh, the gaps that were in here were kind of large. So what I ended up doing was I ended up making some um, mortar spec mix, a batch of that and then filling in those larger gaps that you see right there so that this is kind of like what it looks like after everything has been filled in and it's I think it's really going to help me because I don't have a proper base I didn't put the gravel base it's really just dirt and a little bit of sand so this is going to help um, uh, solidify this um, movement of these brick uh, the problem is is that there's going to be a lot of cleanup that I'm going to need to do. You can kind of see that uh, I'm going to need to uh, really acid etch this, but when we get to that stage we'll we'll address that. For now I'm just going to make up another batch of the spec mix and then and then continue to fill in these larger gaps. Okay so what I'm doing is, is I have a mix of um, mortar, cement mix, uh, mortar mix I should say right there, type S mortar mix and I'm filling in the large gaps plus I'm getting this section. This We're going to do this section together right here so this is not done yet but I have just recently done this section right over here and I've uh, and I've already done this section here. Now 
basically when I'm when I'm done doing it it looks like this then the next day I'll come back and give it an acid wash with this with a with a brush and then rinse that out and then this is what it looks like after that it does not look bad so there's still some there's still some areas that need attention let me give you a better view of that hold on okay so you can see that I got pretty good coverage here I definitely have this this crack here filled in really well uh, compared to what it looks like. Let me show you what it looks like without me touching it. You can see that pretty good gap there. And then here, you can see how I'm filling that in and how that fills in really nicely, okay? So going back over to here, this is kind of like what the final product is going to look like. But I'm still going to do, because there's still some gaps, see if I can see if we can find something here there's still some openings that when I did the brushing they opened up and the the uh, polymetric sand is finer than mortar so we're going to we're still going to give this a polymetric sand treatment but it's just not going to be uh, as much sand because I'm filling in all those larger gaps I can see some areas though that that still have openings that are still going to need some polymetric sand so we're going to go through the whole thing afterwards with the polymetric sand but we're filling in all the large openings with just uh, mortar. So that's the basic procedure. This area took me about five minutes and I'm going to be leaving behind a haze that kind of looks like this but then when I come back the following day with the acid wash which I'll show you then it takes off the haze and it leaves behind this look. Uh, this look right over here. This is what it looks like after the acid wash. So that's a few you know that's th this is the, the, the process that I'm doing to kind of fill this in. Uh, the mortar I think is going to help hold up longer than the polymetric sand. It's a little bit more work. I'm down on my hands and knees, but I think the long-lasting results will be, will be there. And my substrate is not exactly perfect because I don't have a rock substrate. I have a dirt substrate, so I have a couple things against me. So this will give me extra um, ability to resist movement of the stones after the at, when the job is completed. So you saw me do that process right there. I'm just basically going to continue this now, the same process but off camera, um, and I'm just going to complete the uh, the walkway. By the way, let me give you a zoom in on how well it really cleaned up those those joints. Makes a nice this mortar makes a nice seamless transition into my stucco wall. See, I want to complete this project here before I paint the stucco wall, so the tie-in is absolutely perfect, and you can see that. Um, on that joint I've got that absolutely flawless so this way when I go to paint that it will just uh, come in really really nice um, and this joint over here there's no real lippage uh, when you uh, come to the cement walkway to the brick that really ties that in nice so that if you're barefoot or whatever it's going to be somewhat friendly towards your feet. Although I'll give you a before and after of this area over here. Look at how big some of the gaps are right now. You can see that large gap right there. And there's another really large one there. So there's large gaps all over here that are going to fill in really nicely with the, uh, with the mortar. Um, and just really locking these stones in nice. Okay, so this is what it looks like directly after the, uh, the mortar has been uh, put down and let me give you a different view. Alright so now all I have to do is just let this set up and cure out and then either this afternoon or tomorrow I'll come back with the acid a um, muriatic acid so wash it down so that it looks like that after everything's said and done. I'm, so we're gonna have this haze on it for while it cures out and this section was just done and that's why it still has that wet appearance to it. Okay so that's it for now. Okay, it is the afternoon, so it has not even been 24 hours since I put this mortar down. It's been less than that, but I don't want it to set up too long because the less time I put it down to set up, the easier it will be for me to acid wash. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my uh, shop vac down at the end there, and I'm going to start shop vacing up 
all those granulars that I left behind. So I want to get all that heavy stuff out before I do the acid wash. Okay, I have some muriatic acid right here. I got a, a little bit left in that gallon and I got two more gallons there if I need it. So we are going to start our project right now. Let's start over here and work our way down. Okay, it's all washed down. Everything is still wet and um, it is difficult to see how good or bad of a job I did as far as getting all of that um, hazing from the mortar and, uh, out of the brick until this dries. So we'll show you this tomorrow to see how well I did. But my expectation is for it to have uh, similar results to what we already did, which was this job right over here. So my expectation is that the job that we did will look like this. So stepping back from it over here, you can see that should be carried over to there. Now with this technique, you do lose some granules or mortar that I put down. You can see some a hole right there. But if you look at the rest of that uh, joint, you'll see that pretty much that whole joint, other than that one spot, is still intact. So 95, 98% of the mortar I put in is still existing. Smaller joints like that one right there, they got washed out in this process and that's why I'm still going to need to use the polymetric sand. But the larger joints like that one right there, as an example, that still has the mortar left in it. And so I'm still locked in on 95% of the project. So um, what we'll do is we'll just let this dry out tomorrow. We'll see uh, how well I did on my hazing. If I did a good job, then we can put the polymetric sand down and completely uh, lock in every this entire project. Okay, it's the following morning and the brick actually looks pretty good. It's still a little damp because it's um, the sun hasn't had a chance to really dry everything out yet but um, I can already tell that the brick is fine as far as the cement goes but while I was just doing quality control here not on the brick but on the on the walkway do you see this so I, I feel like I need to etch this section here a little bit more better yeah for sure also uh, so this 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 you can kinda like see exactly like where it stops so I definitely want to get that a little bit better. I might as well do this at the same time. This section here. This, this slab looks pretty good. This one looks really good. But right about here, kind of see a little bit of a cloud cover there. Then I see where I could just clean that up a little bit. So I'm happy with the brick, but I'm going to etch this section here just because I want to go over that one more time. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, it's that afternoon and the sun is just getting ready to uh, cross over the house so the shading is going to start going this way. So while the shading is like this, you can see the, um, the cracks the easiest so, it's, so, it'll, so I want to get the um, polymetric sand down right now because it's easy to find out where it goes. The, um, the part that I did the acid wash in, all this portion here, it looks really good. So we're ready for the polymetric sand so we can complete this uh, project. So let me get the sand and we'll start laying it out. Okay, I've got some, uh, some brooms here, but I basically plan on just using this broom right here for pretty much the whole job. This is the polymetric sand that I have and it's left over from another project. Uh, lock them up polymetric jointing sand. The color is gray and this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's a little hard to see because of the shading, but uh, anyways, you'll see it when I pour it out. It's a very fine uh, sand. So I got me a bucket to grab it plus another 
um, foxtail uh, broom in case I want to, uh, to help maneuver it into the uh, into the cracks. There's not that many cracks as as you're as you're looking here, so I'm just gonna do it kind of slowly uh, to make sure that I'm not wasting the sand frivolously. Okay, I have all the polymetric sand filled in as much as I could get it to go. Now I'm going to take my leaf blower, go over the whole area with the leaf blower, and then the last step is just to spray the water, and we're done. The reason why you want to do uh, the leaf blower is because you're just trying to blow off the dust that's over it. Once you do the water, it, everything's going to stick down, so you want to make sure that the only the only the cracks and crevices are filled in otherwise you could have um, just additional polymetric sand that you didn't anticipate I was just walking doing some quality control and I can kind of see some areas that look like I might have to give a second application like right there I can see that hole so um, I guess I missed it on the first go around. So I'm just going to let this um, set up and um, let all this water evaporate and uh, go back to a dry condition. And then I might give this a, a second application. Overall, though, it's not, not bad. It's coming out really good. I just noticed a couple of uh, spots that are a little light. Right there looks a little light. And right there. So, I might just give this a second sec, second application. Okay, it has been a few hours. The, the brick is dry enough. I can give it another application. So, I'm going to just do the exact same procedure. Put the sand down. Using the, the, uh, the green push broom worked better than the small uh, kitchen broom. So, I'm just going to do that. Go, go through this whole thing and try to fill in every little nook and cranny. Same process. Okay, I've just got done with that second application and that's probably gonna, that's gonna be the end of the uh, project. Everything is uh, wetted down. You know what's nice is that when you walk on these, they are just solid, solid rock hard so they don't give it all, which I like that where there's no movement underneath your feet. And I've pretty much got all the, uh, every single thing uh, filled in really nicely so that no weed growth should grow in between the uh, the openings uh, between between the brick uh, joints so and I really like that aspect so I don't have to worry about maintenance uh, working on this so hopefully we'll get many many years out of this uh, installation and we won't have to uh, we won't have to worry about it Okay, that is going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click on like if you did. If you didn't, please leave a comment what you didn't like about the video. Uh, subscribe to my channel, Ken Training, and check out my other videos. I'll catch you on the flip side.